All right, this is Grade 1, Module 1, Lesson 5. Uh, parents and teachers, in this lesson, this is kind of a continuation of our previous lessons in which we are helping our students experience these put-together situations, and then they're representing them with number bonds. And the point of a put-together situation, for example, in our picture down here, we see that we've got four squares and we have three triangles. So we could write that down, four squares and we have three triangles. And then the, the idea would be, well, how many shapes do we have all together? And one way for the students to solve this question would be simply to count everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the answer would be seven. Uh, but what we really want our students to see is like in a number bond, the concept of being able to count on from one of these sets. So for example, we could start here and we know that there's four squares, so we can simply say four and then punch the air with our fist, four, and then count on five, six, seven, and we end up with seven. Or we could reverse it. We could start with the three and punch the air with our fist with three, and then four, five, six, seven. So the idea would be to count on from one of these embedded numbers and then count up to find the total. So let's practice. So here it says, Match the dice to show the different ways to make seven, not all the ways to make seven, but some different ways to make seven, and then draw a number bond for each pair of dice. So we've got right here, one plus six makes a seven, and so it's represented right here. Uh, here's your seven is your whole, and then your two embedded numbers, your decomposition. Decomposition is one and six. So we're looking for seven. So I see another one. I see, well, here, B, uh, two and five. So let's draw our little line here, two and five. And so our, in this case, they're trying to show us that a number bond can be, the hole could be on top or the hole could be on the bottom. We need our students to be flexible. And in this case, it looks like we can put two and five. Of course, teachers and parents the students could have done five and two if they chose. And then the last one, by a process of elimination, three and four. So there's our seven and three and four. So here, make two number sentences. Use the number bonds above for help. So something plus something equals seven. So. Uh, parents and teachers, uh, our students can use these as their, uh, I don't know, inspiration, or they can come up with their own if they choose. Uh, but let's do um, one plus six equals seven. Oh, let's do another number sentence. Let's do three plus four equals seven. Or in this case, we would say seven equals three plus four. So teachers, parents, why do we do this? We want, we're, we're really specifically uh, addressing some research that shows that students are uh, often under the misunderstanding that the answer always has to go on the right side. And that just absolutely is not true. It's called the reflexive property that says it's true, that we can flip it around if we choose. And uh, so the answer, so could be on the left side. And so this question is very specifically addressing that common student misunderstanding. And then here, we're going to color dominoes that make seven. So we can um, use our little thing, and we're just going to count the dots. Now, remember, we're trying to count on. So when the students look at a domino, we want them to choose one of these two numbers, in this case, six, and then count on. So they're going to punch the air with their fist and say six, and then seven. Ah, so that's one that we can color in. So I'm going to color that one in. 
And then here, let's look. I see a three and a two. So let's start with a three. And I'm going to punch the air with a, th a fist and say three, four, five. Well, that's no good. Now here, I've got a zero up here, and it looks like I've got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven. Seven plus zero. Boom. There it is. Done. That's nice. I can color that one in. And then I'm going to speed this on, teachers. Um, but please, you guys, absolutely don't speed this through, you know, with your students. Uh, take the time. Let the kids punch the air with their fist and then count on. We're just practicing. And here is another seven. And here is another seven. And so you can see we've found four dominoes that make seven. And we have four number bonds down here that we can um, then fill in. Now they've given us, in all cases, we could say seven, 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 and seven is our, our whole number. And now the idea would be um, to fill in the rest of our little number bond. So I can see that here we've got a zero. Well, which domino has a zero? Oh, this one. So that's zero and seven. So I'm going to fill in seven right here. Seven. And then we have a seven, and one of our parts is a six. So what's the other part? It's a one, and I'm just going to continue and finish this off, parents and teachers. Uh, please don't zoom through this with your students. I'm just modeling this for our parents and teachers at this point. Let's move on. And that wraps up lesson five, first grade, module one, lesson five, where we continue that experience with our put-together situations where the students are representing it with number bonds and they're really practicing the count-on method of finding the total.